everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lynn, and this is the Sunshine and Bubblegum Podcast. This is a knitting, crocheting, sewing, and crafting podcast, and I am uh, just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana, and today is August 11th, and I am recording during the day. I'm so excited. Uh, we've been traveling a lot with the family in the past few weeks, and we're not quite on a regular routine, so nights have been crazy. So I am attempting to record uh, small videos throughout the day today when I get um, a quiet moment and I will piece them together and hopefully like magic you'll never even know I was gone. So let's see how it goes. Also I have way more energy during the day so this could be even crazier than it normally is. I don't know if we've gotten that crazy yet but here we go. So welcome back to anyone who's returning. Uh, I can't wait to show you what I've been working on. Um, I've been busy. I have, don't have any finished objects yet, but I have lots of progress to show you. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. I hope that uh, anything I'm doing inspires you to uh, pick up the needles again or work on a project you've been um, keeping on the side for a while or maybe try something new. Uh, my sisters tell me I'm an enabler, so I hope I can enable you also. You can find me uh, on Instagram or Ravelry as Sunshine Bubblegum. I also have a Ravelry page, uh, Sunshine Bubblegum Podcast, and please come over and join. I'm hoping to start a Cal um, coming in September, and I'll have some more information about that coming up, and you have to be a member of the group to be part of that. Um, and there is an information feed, a little bit about me. Uh, please come and introduce yourself. There's a question section if there's any questions you have about my crafts or me in, in person uh, me personally uh, I'll do my best to um, answer everything and maybe I'll, you'll get your question on the show uh, and also all of the show notes are there up on the uh, Ravelry page. I'm also on Facebook as Sunshine and Bubblegum and you can find me on Etsy as Sunshine and Bubblegum also. So um, I think I'm going to stop right here for the moment and I will come back with the next section um, and we'll see how this goes. Thank you so much and I'll be right back. Hey, so I'd like to talk about a few podcasts um, before we get into uh, projects that I've been working on. As uh, many of you know and follow other podcasts, there's so many out there and it's a great amazing community. And I'd like to try and highlight each episode um, some smaller podcasts um, that uh, I've found that may not um, be quite mainstream for everybody and um, just give them a little shout out and notice. And also I need to give a few thank yous today to people that gave me a shout out. So Lori over at Boston Mama Knits, uh, she's fantastic and she's been having a great summer. Uh, going to all the Renaissance fairs up near Chicago. Uh, I'm enjoying seeing your videos and I know you're having fun and she's been getting into dyeing really lately and um, she's having a blast. She's making a big old mess and trial and error on all kinds of fun things and I'm a little jealous. Um, but thank you so much for thinking of me and talking about me on your podcast. It really means so much. Also, um, a new podcaster, um, but a beautiful yarn dyer, is Kayleen uh, from Little Bean Crochet, and she is a beautiful dyer. She is from Massachusetts, very close to my hometown, so she's very close to my heart already. Uh, I purchased some yarn from her to show off today, which I'll do in a little bit, um, but also she is a mom, a stay-at-home mom, just like I am, and she's taking her craft. Uh, she's a beautiful crocheter, she's learning to knit, and uh, she's a beautiful yarn dyer, and she has an amazing imagination when it comes to themed yarns. So please go check her out, and I will be sure to add um, in the show notes and hopefully on the screen links or um, everyone's name and where you can find them. So a few podcasts that um, are also uh, new to me this week, um, or I've been watching for a little while, but I would like to share. Um, is uh, Knitting a Love Song podcast, and that is by Kirsten, and she is also in the New Orleans area. She is another gorgeous yarn dyer. Um, she's making some beautiful yarns that I would love to make big projects with, like a sweater, 
um, it, they're, they're beautiful, beautiful, um, solid and tonals and variegated yarns. Um, they, she is from the New York, New Jersey area, which is also New England, and she's living down here. So again, similar story to me. Um, and a lot of her yarns are uh, New England themed, uh, and um, I'm loving them, and I'm enjoying watching her too. Um, also, I've come across, uh, uh, actually she found me, Candy, over at the Pause for Stitches podcast her and her husband Jamie although Jamie says he's not you know the main star of the show he, apparently he has been on all the episodes I haven't been able to catch up on every one yet um, but they are also out of the New Jersey New York area um, and they have a place up in uh, upstate New York uh, the Adirondacks and they are living my dream up in the country on the weekends and whenever they get a chance to go up there they have two beautiful Labrador dogs and they have been so much fun and we have to thank Barbara from Knitting I Love for this introduction. She mentioned both of us on her podcast and Candy um, reached out to me. I had actually, actually, when I was watching the podcast, um, pinned her on my Instagram real quick and, um, but she was able to come, she, she found my podcast first and um, gave me some beautiful words and we've been messaging back and forth ever since. So those are some great uh, YouTube podcasts to check out. If you're an audio podcast listener, uh, there is Unraveled with Greg and Joey. Uh, I have them on my iTunes, and I found them through my friend Rob, who owns the Coveted Yarn uh, Yarn Store up in Gloucester, Mass., and he is their sponsor for their podcast, and they are great. There are two gentlemen that are podcasting. They actually have never met in person but um, have come together um, through work and um, different times that they've met um, through business meetings and found out that they both um, love knitting and, and crafting and crocheting, and it's great. They are snarky, they are witty, and they are a lot of fun. So if you get a chance, please check out any of these uh, beautiful people and their awesome podcasts and... Um, you know, there's, there's always more. I have plenty more in my, in my queue, um, and I know you all have favorites too, and um, that's really fun. And these people are so encouraging. I've, I've messaged with all of them uh, at some point, and um, we encourage each other, and that's really, really awesome. Uh, I was going to say this for the end, but I think since we're talking about podcasters, I might pop it in here, and I hope... Um, anyone doesn't mind um, the the babble here for one one more minute and then we'll get on to the crafting um, something that's near and dear to my heart that's come up on a few other podcasts and I find it so empowering is um, people talking about why they've started and um, KT from inside number 23 was talking about how she's actually you know very shy and was very nervous and this was all really scary for her to start, and I and I can completely empathize. I'm getting over my my nerves and my fear um, of podcasting, and I'm actually a very outgoing person. And for me, I, I got very nervous um, sitting here in front of a camera talking to myself, knowing that it was going to go out to a bunch of people. I'd, I'd much rather be in a room full of people and talk face to face. So this was a, a challenge for myself, um, and. Uh, Jules with the So Sweet Violet podcast um, was very brave and talked about um, depression in her life and how she's taking steps to overcome that and she shared her story in hopes that maybe she can help somebody else and um, there was a time um, and maybe more than once that I've had um, a, a bit of depression and found felt stuck especially being a stay-at-home mom from a woman who's worked almost her entire life. My family owned a butcher shop. My great-grandparents opened um, when they came over from Sicily and it was back when Gloucester was, you know, the, the, sea, the sea fishing town and there was a baker and a dairy place and a butcher shop and my grandparents had the butcher shop. So growing up, that's I worked there. I didn't know anything different and from there I've worked my entire life. So being home these past three years have been wonderful but very weird for me and emotionally it is a roller coaster and to know that I'm not the only one and um, other people have experienced this or different experiences and for different reasons 
and that we've all come out the other side. Um, it's really um, huge and it's motivating and encouraging and I want to thank you all so very much. Um, so I want to, I hope that everyone watching um, can be empowered by other people's stories and, um, and know that, uh, you know, there are ways, there are ways to be happy, there are ways to uh, work on yourself and, and it's okay. It's okay, and um, we're all, we're all here for supporting each other, and that's that's amazing. That's the most amazing part of all of this is everyone is so supportive, and I want to thank you all for that. So I hope that I support somebody else, and that um, you do something wonderful with whatever it is that you're encouraged to do. So this week, or uh, the past couple weeks, I have been posting on my Instagram a mystery knit that I've been working on, and I'm going to reveal what it is. I did, I did give a, uh, a quiz last night to see if anyone had guessed it, and there were a few that got it right. Um, so I'm going to show this to you as soon as I stop pulling stitches out of it. So, uh, a good friend of mine that used to work with me up uh, near Boston uh, asked if I could do a dog sweater. She has a Yorkshire Terrier, and I'm going to make two. And this is the color palette that we chose for the first one. I hope the purples come through. It's got purple, pink, bright orange, bright yellow, lime green, this beautiful electric blue, and then back into the pink and the ribbing on the end in the purple. Uh, all I have left is to... Um, do the purple edging around the um, front armholes. So this is my little dog sweater and this is a free pattern on Ravelry and I didn't write down what it is so I will put it right here on the on the screen <laughs> the name of the pattern. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. It's actually knit in pieces. Um, this ribbing section you do um, all the stockinette um, down and start decreasing at the end uh, then you do a whole nother um, the middle panel which is all in ribbing knit one purl one rib you start with seven stitches and then you add on on the edges till you get to the right amount of stitches and then you knit down you seam those together and then you pick up stitches on the back end for the um, the back end um, I did knit two purl two on that because um, I started with the collar and I the pattern calls for knit one purl one so I did knit one purl one so it's nice and stretchy and I did a, the I think Jenny super stretchy bind off so that it, it would be um, easier for the puppy to get on and off um, but I, I think for the back side I wanted a different look so I went with the knit two purl two and it came out really nice so uh, I will Hopefully get the legs on this done um, this week and mailed out. So I'll be sure to take pictures to show everybody how it comes out finished. And I'm sure Jess would be happy to send us a picture of her little puppy Toby wearing it um, when she gets it so we can show that off too. Let's see. My socks. Okay, so last time... I was complaining that my uh, double pointed needles hadn't come in yet and of course the very next day they arrived so all that complaining was not uh, necessary but um, so I started I left off let's see the best way to do this I left off um, right here on the tan I did it from the cuff all the way up and this is um, Knit Picks Felici and the Time Traveler colorway and this is Susan B. Anderson's um, Smooth Operator Sock Pattern. And Susan recommended a six inch cuff um, with her pattern and I was very excited and I did six color repeats and then I put in my waist yarn for the heel and continued on, like she says, for another three inches to um, onto the foot. So I then measured it later and realized I didn't have six inches. I just had six color stripes. So it's a little bit of a short sock, but I don't mind that at all. I actually um, wear my socks um, if they're long, folded over, or I wear them short. So this will be a beautiful ankle sock, and it's going to be perfect. Um, so last night, uh, I took out the waist yarn, 
put in um, my two double points to hold either side of where the heel is going to be and that will be my next step. That was a little nerve-wracking picking up those very tiny stitches. I almost had to go get my husband's reading glasses again and I took a little video that I put on my Instagram of me holding my breath and taking the yarn out um, but when it gets to that last needle and it goes it's very satisfying and to know I did it, I did it, I did it. So I'm in the very same place on the other sock um, I just didn't pull it out because I have a few things here and I don't want to get everything tangled. But I'm almost done and uh, my plan is to have them finished before the end of August so I can enter them in Susan B. Anderson's uh, Smooth Operator Socks Cal that she has going on and also in the Bakery Bears um, Summer of Socks Cal. Uh, those are the only two that I know of that are still going um, for the summer so I'm hoping to enter these in there and that will be my first um, cal that I've ever entered, my first two cal that I've ever entered. So that's very exciting. Um, my pillow that I'm knitting, which isn't very exciting right now, but it's getting a lot of progress done. I'm going to try and show this without talking behind it this time. So last time I had knit from the bottom to the stitch marker here, uh, and I've gotten uh, this much more done. Just plain old stockinette. Um, it is just about half of the, of the, um, the, uh, vertical length that I need to cover the front of the pillow. And, um, I have about half the ball left. This is the Malabrigo worsted in the Polar Morn colorway, which is, uh, 009. It's so pretty. And the, um, variation on the yarn is beautiful. See, you can see it without seeing my face. Um, I'm loving how it's coming out. I'm loving how the um, the weight of the yarn is thicker and thinner, and the texture and the color variation um, gives a lot of interest to a pillow that is supposed to be um, a stockinette. Uh, now, what I'm worried about is playing a little char yarn chicken um, with my ball of yarn because I need um, two panels to cover the pillow and then another quarter of that to do the detail that I wanted to do. So the pattern in my mind might change. Um, and this is just a pattern that I'm making up. I did some swatching and got my gauge for, um, you know, how big I want it. And um, then I will put it all together. And this is going to go to my sister's interior store design um, showroom. She has a store and showroom, Gianna Designs, up in North Andover, Mass and that will be uh, in her store for the fall. So that's coming along well. Um, the pattern may just change uh, if I seem that I'm going to run out of yarn. So um, the last project that I'm working on, I don't have any finished objects today, but um, I do have one more whip, and that is my crocheted blanket, which is living in this giant bag. Just a big duffel that I have, a quilted duffel, and I love it. Uh, great for traveling, great for blanket storage. So this is the Minnesota Twins um, Afghan. Uh, I'm knitting it out of, um, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby in the Cranberry Navy Ivory and Sun Gold colorways. The pattern is Cabin in the Woods. Um, I have, I'll put the link on, on the screen just like I will with everything else. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm using a size I hook and one thing I, I've shown my hooks a couple times but I don't think I talked about this um, these are just Susan Bates hooks um, but what I did and I found at the craft store was they're they're like almost like a pencil grip they're foam so I've gotten two I put them on my H and my I hooks because those seem to be the two that I use the most especially for these big projects and um, they they're, they're really comfortable the way I hold my crochet hook. I don't know, I actually have to crochet to look and see how I hold it while I'm working, but it's really, really um, nice on, on um, my fingers. Now the other thing I have to work on is how I hold my yarn because I find that I, I end up holding it and pushing my finger into my hand. So the, um, I have to keep my nails short and the other night I actually had to put a band-aid on my hand because it was already so sore from working so long um, that I had to uh, give myself a little added comfort. 
But anyway, this is coming out gorgeous. I am hoping to finish it um, by September. Uh, the lady that has bought, um, commissioned me to do this one is also um, uh, going to be the proud owner of the LSU blanket that I showed um, finished in the last episode. And she's coming um, into town um, in September, so I want to have them all ready for her. And uh, that's my goal. So, so far, this I've gotten a lot done. I'm going to have to stand up to show you this one and find my progress keeper. So, this is the colors I've chosen. This is very similar to the pattern, um, just as it is. Let me pull it up a little bit more. Okay, so the very blue stripe, the white, the blue, the white, the red, right to this dish marker was where I was last time. And I have added on another, it's not focusing very nicely, um, white, navy, gold, navy, white, red into the cranberry again um, since the last podcast. Wow, that white's getting really washed out. I'm sorry, I don't mean to blind anybody with that. So it is coming out wonderful. And I work at this. I work on this at night when I watch my podcasts or um, Netflix movies. I know everyone's going crazy over a new Netflix um, sci-fi. I'm a little nervous to watch. I don't mind. Um, I don't mind sci-fi's and I don't mind mysteries. I don't even mind murder mysteries. Um, I mind gore. Uh, and a few people said that it's not gory, so I might take the chance. I think it's called Stranger Things. Uh, I might take the chance and um, give it a look-see. Because um, right now I'm watching Midsummer Murders, so that's all about murders. But it's also set in the 70s and 80s, so it's not that, not that scary. Um, so those are all my works in progress right now for knitting. I do have some uh, sewing to show you. So let me swap out uh, what I have right here on the table, and I'll be right back. I've sewn more in the last two weeks than I have definitely in the past two years. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've actually given away both the things that I made, but I have a few more things um, that I'm, I'm going to finish up and I will uh, show you what I have going on. Um, the first two things I made uh, were um, little bags. I tried a little drawstring bag pattern and I actually used that as a giveaway for my um, Instagram. I hit 200 followers on Instagram. I paired it with the Gnome Knitters waffle stitch marker that she had given to me to give as a giveaway. So uh, it found a beautiful home with my little bag and that was a lot of fun and I hope to do more more things like that on my Instagram and also through here. Um, it was really exciting. Um, and the pattern, the fabric I used on that little bag was these pears. It was so bright and so fun and they came out really nice that I went back and got a little bit more because I'd like to make another bag, um, maybe for myself or, or maybe as another giveaway. This was, this was a lot of fun. The second bag was in the same fabric. I actually have it in the opening, um, my little opening intro. I put a photograph of it in there. Um, it's a, more of a little cosmetic style, um, but it was big enough to fit um, two balls of sock yarn <laughs> and needles, uh, and that was its original intent. Um, but my dear friend is an Ever skincare consultant, and um, she did a similar uh, giveaway on her Instagram, and I gave that to her as a giveaway prize to go with her, um, her promotion. Uh, so that was really fun, and it came, out, it came out really nice. And I hope the uh, recipient of that really enjoys it, and um, I hope to make a few more. These were, these, these were fun, small projects that I could do in one day, and I like that a lot. Um, I did um, cut out some more fabric uh, for another little drawstring bag. The zippers were a little fiddly. I need more practice, um, but the drawstring bags are really, really quick and fun. Um, just a lot of, you know, lining up and working on uh, sewing in the right place. So I've cut out um, the uh, flower fabric here. It's navy background with the pink, 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 and, gray, pink and gray flowers on it. And the inside will be these gray with white polka dots. So that is on my little sewing table when I get, you know, another free moment and um, to hop in there and do a little sewing. I have to iron it and do a couple things and pin it all together before I can sew, but that won't take long. 
So the big thing that I'm gearing up for is the Holly Byrne skirt sew along that I'm doing. Um, KT from Inside Number 23 is hosting that um, and she's um, putting up her tutorial videos and the latest one went up uh, either last night or this morning about sewing the pockets so I am a step behind. I have um, got my pattern though. I ordered the PDF pattern from Sewaholics and uh, have it all printed out and I need to, um, I don't think I'm giving too much away. It is obviously a paid pattern um, but you print out um, which pages you need uh, on 8x10 and it ha gives you the, the, it needs to be this correct size so you know that your pattern is um, printed out correctly and then you print out whichever pattern it specifies. So I'm doing number C, which is the shorter version of the skirt. Um, I need to paste these together and cut them out and then start cutting out my fabric. So again, this is my fabric. It is a, um, a denim blue. Uh, looks just like a jean, but it's actually a really, really light um, cotton, very drapey. And I think I have a whole extra yard. I think I, I um, didn't realize how wide it was when I got it, but that's okay because I'm a sewer now. So I'm going to make something else with whatever's left over. So that's what's been going on in my sewing. I will try and hold on to a few things, whatever I make, so I can show you all next time. But I have been putting everything on my Instagram. So that's probably the best way to follow me um, and, and see what I'm up to in between podcasts. Um, I have a couple weeks left and then the boys start school. So I'm going to either record right before they start or most likely right after they start and um, we'll try not to cry through the whole episode. I'm very excited. This is their first time in school. They're starting preschool and I'm very excited. I know they're going to have a wonderful time but that mama in me is getting really heartbroken that my boys, my boys won't be with me and that they might be sad or scared or have all those emotions that it is on the first day of school. But we do have a meet and greet day before school actually starts so I think well it's probably more for the parents <laughs> but I think it'll be just fine so uh, my next episode will be a bit more about the kids in school and um, a little bit about my free time that I have because they will be in school three hours Monday through Friday every day so that's exciting so uh, I will be right back with some acquisitions and gifts that I've received this week all right, I actually have brand new yarn that I've purchased in the past few weeks to show off. And the first one is from uh, Kaylin um, from Little Bean Crochet. And um, let's see if I can show her card. But uh, she again, she is out of Massachusetts and she has a lot of fun themed colorways. Um, and what I bought was my gradient yarn, which um, is will be, I guess so this will be my intro to my Cal. Uh, it's going to start um, September. So I'll probably give all the details um, in the very next episode. That'll be the start. I will let it run for two months, so September to October. You need to use a gradient yarn. Um, this will give you a couple weeks if you don't have a gradient, but maybe there's one that you have your eye on um, that you've been dying to use. You can use um, a gradient that's all in one. You can use a gradient that is maybe um, four or five colors that come in the sets. Or if you have some that you'd like to blend as a gradient, uh, there's some really talented people that can do that. Um, you're welcome to it. There's no set pattern. Um, uh, this is just, you know, uh, a lot for, for fun. And we will have some prizes. Um, I'll set up a thread in my Ravelry group when I get it going. So I'll probably have that all set up for the next episode. We'll go over all of the details. And um, I'm really excited. So if you have a gradient that you want to use uh, or looking at a gradient that you want to get, um, now's the time. And again, there's no set pattern. Um, uh, other than maybe a full pair of adult socks would be the smallest size thing you can make. Um, but you can make anything else after that. Um, so get, get thinking about what you'd like to make and we'll start, we'll start it all with all the rules and all the good stuff next week. So what I'm going to use for my gradient knit is, 
I want to make sure I say it right. This is Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. I fell in love with it right away. I love the Weasley twins, Fred and George, and of course, uh, maybe because I have my own set of twins. Um, it goes from a beautiful burnt orange into a lighter orange, into a cream, into a lovely, lovely plum purple. And you can see on the back side a bit more of the purple. I think it's just the way the ball wound up. Now, um, her hand-painted yarns are called Little Bean Loves. And I think she has a new um, logo out now, and it may be the Little Bean and Me. But that might be her podcast, her new podcast. It's, she's definitely the Little Bean. She's Little Bean Crochet on Instagram. But I believe her podcast is the Little Bean and Me. And Little Bean Loves is her... Um, Etsy. So I'll put my, make sure that all of her information is on screen and also in the show notes. But the cool thing that she has done is she has um, cake, uh, she has wound this all up into the sock blank herself and double stranded it. So um, each sock will be identical. So she has a little pull right here if I wanted to start with purple and there is another pull. I don't want to pull the label off but there's another pull right here. Um, that starts the outside if I'd like to start an orange. So my biggest dilemma will be which way to start with because I'm going to do, um, I've picked my pattern for the Hermione's Everyday Socks. Uh, it seems like a really fun pattern. It's got a nice texture to it but I think that will look really pretty um, with a gradient yarn and be able to show off the pattern and the colors uh, together. And also, I am that dork that likes to pair things, so my Harry Potter yarn will be going with a Harry Potter themed pattern. I love it. It's very, very soft. And it always surprises me how tiny the threads are. I mean, I've been working with the Felici now for over a month, and that, this came in and I was like, wow, that's really tiny. But it's the same. I'm already using it uh, as far as the width, the fingering width. Uh, wait. So this is beautiful. I love it. Kayleen, you did a beautiful job and I can't wait to get this on the needles. I just have to get uh, the other new socks off my needles because I only have one pair of needles. Um, so in my travels, uh, we were up to um, upstate Louisiana. My family has a farm up there. Uh, we were visiting a family up there the first weekend and then this past weekend we went to visit uh, my sister-in-law and my new baby niece while well, my brother is underway um, out on the boat with the Coast Guard. He flies helicopters. Um, so she was visiting her family. We got to go over and visit and the cousins all got to meet. And there was a little yarn store in Milton that we got to visit and it is called Yarn and Things. The owner Maria was there and she was really sweet. It's definitely a little small town store. Um, she had a class that was going on when we came and she said she had another class coming that afternoon. They were doing mermaid blankets and um, she had a lot of lovely, lovely things and a lot of things in there um, that were for sure, um, you know, what people in town enjoyed working with. And one of the things that I found um, that I had to have because I've heard about it from Jenny and Devin of the uh, Woolen and Handmade in Woolen podcast. I wanted to say Little Paper Foxes, but that was Jenny's um, when it was just hers. Now it's the team uh, uh, podcast, Handmade in Woolen. Uh, they're up in Vermont and they got to go to the Green Mountain Spinnery. So Maria was telling me that she got to go up on her vacation and she went to the spinnery and got the full tour and uh, brought home some beautiful yarns um, for her shop. And I got two and they are beautiful. The cream is called Luminosity and the green sagey color is called Peridot. Peridot? Peridot. Um, it is my birthstone, and I, I'm a August baby, so I will be celebrating my birthday probably before my next podcast, so we'll definitely have something birthday-related um, surprise for everybody there, too, because I love my birthday. I love celebrating my birthday, and I'm excited that I get to share my birthday with you, even though I don't want to talk about what age I'm going to be. <laughs> That's probably the face. That'll be the face that... Uh, YouTube picks up for the, the snapshot <laughs> at the beginning of the episode. 
Um, but anyway, these are a, let me see. So sorry. What is it? Oh, DK weight. These are a DK weight. It's called the Sylvan Spirit. It is 50% fine American wool and 50% tessel. And they are 58 gram skeins. So I, my, my want is to make a hat and or mittens. Out of them, if I have enough, um, I'd like to do mittens. Um, but either way, I'd like to do try a little color work. I, I wanted to try a little color work, and these colors were so beautiful, so beautiful. I love them so much. I had to have them. And I also found and bought in there a sock yarn. Uh, my mom. Um, yes, sweetheart. Boys have been good. Okay, so back, um, we were in Milton, Florida. I found the yarn from the Vermont, oh my goodness, Green Mountain Spinnery up in Vermont. I think I got, I think I got through all that. So what I was going to talk about, I found a sock yarn for my mom. Um, she has an allergy to wool, and so any of the um, projects that I will make for her um, need to be a plant fiber or synthetic. Um, I'm not sure about uh, alpacas and things like that, so I'm going to avoid it, but I found a fun blue yarn. This is from Plymouth Yarn. It's called Diversity. It's 93 acrylic, 7% polyester, and it's called Memory Yarn. And it is 100 grams, and it does not have a colorway. It is 0001. So it is super pretty. I think it's definitely going to stripe. Uh, it's got uh, three different shades, two or three different shades of blue, and then the white. Uh, it is so so. It is like really soft. You like you want to. You just want to squish it. You want to squish it. Um, so this will be really fun. Um, hi mom, I'm making you a pair of socks someday. Uh, but I was excited. I, I really love the feel of the yarn, um, and uh, I think that it will make a really yummy pair of socks. Um, that would be something I'll work on after my Hermione's Everyday Socks, of course. So the next big prize that I had when I came home was from my sister, and she sent me a big box. She was decluttering her yarn stash and found some yarns that we went through over um, the computer, and I picked out ones that I would like, and she sent them to me. So I have a few of the box. There's a big box um, to show off. And the first one, there is about 10 balls of this beautiful blue. It is Lanes de Nord Maxi. It is um, kind of a cobalt, not quite navy, really pretty. Um, does not have a color name, but it is color 403. It is 70% wool, 30% acrylic, and 50 gram balls. And I'd say it's about a worsted. I think it's their worsted weight. Um, so I have about 10 of these. I could make something really fabulous or a bunch of smaller fabulous things. Um, I kind of want something solid with it, but I also thought it would be really pretty to do uh, um, with a white um, and do some more color work. I, I really love the look of the Fair Isle designs. So I'm going to think about it. I have a lot, so I could do... You do a lot of nice things with this. So this is really exciting. Pop that down on my pile. Hopefully they don't all fall over. And then the next thing is a yarn from Chile. Ar Aranu. I'm going to say this very bad. Aru Kania. Aru Kania. Um, it is a hand dyed yarn. It is a very very light mint green. I don't know if this is going to come through. Boop, boop, boop. The colorway is 140. It is 100% um, 100 per, 100 wool. And I think this would be a worsted, maybe an Aran weight. So I'm hoping to do, you know, I, my thoughts for this would be a hat. Maybe an, a nice cabled hat be a good a good good way to practice cables I think um, with the weight of it uh, and this it's got a little I want to say uh, stiffness maybe I think would hold a cable really beautifully would do really nicely um, one thing I, I am familiar with although I've never knitted them are uh, fisherman sweaters and they tend to have a nice stiff 
um, worsted weight yarn to, to get some beautiful definition on the, um, the Irish cable knits. So that would be really fun. Uh, and then the last one to show is a Malabrigo, and it is color 602, a kettle dyed, pure merino wool, and it does not say any other information. Uh, pale khaki, pale khaki. Um, so I think that this also is a, uh, a worsted, maybe even an Aran. It's a single ply. It is so soft. Um, and I, I think this could be this could be a cowl or um, um, a hat or mittens or or something something for a gift for somebody. So that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This is lovely. So thank you so much, Kira, for my box of fun. That was really exciting, really exciting. Oh, and I have one more thing to show, and it's in the other room. So I'll be right back. Okay, my last thing that I purchased that I wanted to show is from Barbara from Knitting I Love. She makes um, needle cozies and stitch markers, which are also progress keepers. Um, so I will show you what I got. I ordered her double pointed needle holder. It is this beautiful lime green. It's a uh, really hardy um, felt and it's embossed with her logo and beautiful flowers. And it's got these lovely little tags. I should take it all out. I didn't want to take it out yet. Um, that you can put on a finished project that says handmade on it. And um, it's got a snap so you put your needles in and then snap your um, cord so your project doesn't go anywhere. And along with that, I purchased her new Fruit Delight stitch markers. And it comes on this really cute um, stitch marker holder. I'm going to take it out because I want to show you how, what they do. These are really cool two-in-ones. Okay, so this, oh wow, this is really soft. And again, it's embossed with her logo, Knitting I Love. They are adorable fruit stitch markers. I got a grapefruit, watermelon, and a star fruit. I ordered her um, mix and match set, so it was a surprise. I didn't know what I was going to get. She also has um, some flowered, um, fl I think it's Flower Delight um, stitch markers that you can get. So they're on little lobster claws, so they can be a progress keeper. But then she's got this little loop at the end, and you slide the fruit down, and it can be a stitch marker as you go. So these are fantastic. I love the fruits. And um, Barbara asked me to message her and, and tag her when I had filled this up with all my progress keepers. Barbara, these are my very first progress keepers, my fancy ones. I have the plastic, boring ones that I got from the craft store. These are my first, very first, fancy stitch marker and progress keepers. So I will tag you as I get new ones and fill them all up. But I love them so much. So Barbara, who is super sweet, sent me some of her favorite teas that I can't wait to try. I love, I love teas. Love teas. And she sent me... Um, one of her coasters, which you can put your teacup on or your drink, but it is also a needle, a needle gauge. So it has all the different flowers, the center of the flowers, and they say what gauge needle it is, and a second set of stitch markers in her flower pattern. Um, and those are super adorable. So now I have six. Woo! But because Barbara is ridiculously awesome, she sent a podcast prize for me to give away, and I dropped it on the floor. Don't worry, Barbara. It's still in the package. So I have a second coaster with the needle gauge and three uh, flower and one fruit, I think. Uh, looks like a lychee. Um, stitch markers uh, and progress keepers to give away. So I'm going to save these and these are going to be one of the prizes for my gradient cow. Barbara, thank you so much. This was an unexpected surprise and so gracious and sweet. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enter my cow if you have time because you're not, you know, knitting anything else at the moment right now. <laughs> so those were all my purchases. Um, for me, that was a lot of purchases. I'm trying to be good now. My birthday's coming up, and I have a feeling that I will probably get some more yummy goodness uh, from my sisters and mom and family. So, very excited about that. 
Um, I finished my audiobooks by Clara Parks. I had read um, or listened to um, her Yarn Knitlandia, and then I just finished her um, other book <laughs> that I can't remember the title to. I'm sorry, Claire. It was really good. Um, and I will put it right here on the screen somewhere because this was horribly bad of me. But it was really good. I enjoyed it. I listened to it um, all the way to Florida. And then I had to do podcasts all the way home because I had finished it already on my way out there. But I had purchased and received Harry Potter's new book, um, or J.K. Rowling's new book, which is um, actually the manuscript to her play. It has arrived. And I am embarrassed. My sisters are mortified and have yelled at me already that I have only gotten that far into it. But we've been kind of crazy visiting and um, trying to work on my projects at night and get the kids to bed. And I haven't gotten a chance to read as much as I have because I have a lot of projects going on. But um, I will finish it soon. I've enjoyed it so much. Um, it's definitely different than all of her other books um, because it is a play and they are trying to tell a story within a, you know, th this is word for word, word for word, the play. Um, so you lose a lot of her uh, dis description and the time sequences um, goes a lot faster than in her books. So that part was kind of a bummer because you want all the details, you want all the, the what's going on and a lot of it's just left to the imagination of um, what happens in between. So I'm, I won't say anything else, um, but uh, I am enjoying it a lot uh, and I will finish it before the next show, I promise promise. So those are all my books and reading. Um, I talked about a lot of my podcasts already and I need to check my notes and see what else I had. Um, please forgive me one second. Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. Okay, I'll give a big dramatic pause so I can edit that out. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to talk about is uh, goes along with the Harry Potter book is I went and got, I went on Pottermore and got sorted into my house and I'm a Gryffindor. So I immediately woke up, uh, I had done that night right before bed so I shouldn't have done that because then I was up all night wanting to have my sisters um, join me so I Messaged them right first thing in the morning, and my sister Kira got sorted, and she is a Ravenclaw. My sister Beth got sorted, and she is a Hufflepuff. And my mom got sorted, and she is a Slytherin. Which, she said when it pops up, it says, 10 reasons why you should not be upset you're a Slytherin. <laughs> but we had a really good time. We all, uh, we all got our wands, too. So that was really fun and just kind of brings home the whole Harry Potter, Harry Potter theme of, um, of our lives at the moment um, with the book and the next movie coming out, The Fantastical Beasts and Where to Find Them will be in November and we have a big sister's date to go see that. Um, so that'll be excited. And my other sister uh, has some uh, makeup and eyelash um, creativity that she wants to do on me so hopefully we'll be able to do a fun podcast of that in November too with my sister Liz um, she keeps me looking glamorous uh, so that's all the all the fun that's going on right now um, I'm gonna put some pictures in at the end of uh, our trip up to the farm uh, going up to um, Bunky Louisiana and uh, that's always a magical place one of my favorite places to knit and craft and sew and I will put some beautiful pictures of that trip in there. Um, my Florida trip was really just a lot of baby snuggling and uh, not ready to show publicly, you know, all the kids yet. So I apologize for not putting up more pictures of that part of my trip. Hey, so the other day on Instagram, I put out a um, questions for me, um, little note if anyone had any questions that they'd like for me to talk about on the podcast. And I got... Um, one question from Spring Song on Instagram, and her question is, one thing I'm still learning, even though I'm advanced with my technique, is the differences between some of the yarn weights and plies and such. That would be helpful. So, I um, am not an expert, <laughs> but I will tell you what I know and uh, show you a few things that I've found. 
Um, so I'm going to try and pop in a couple pictures here um, as I go. I don't know. Just stick with me here for a minute. So I went to the craftyarncouncil.com and they talked about some of the different weights and they showed um, a great chart which will be inserted if not right here hopefully right after this little talking bit um, that tells all the different um, names and this is a standardized form through the yarn council um, so it shows you the different names and the different um, symbols that might show up on packaging and what to look for and what needle gauge to use and um, I, I found it helpful and I hope that that finds you you find it helpful also so forgive me I'm gonna read off my notes here real quick um, but it goes through the different types of yarn and it has the lace weight which would encompass fingering and 10 count crochet thread so I've seen this before it's very very thin thin um, thread that you do um, edging on um, different like um, garments or you might see it on doilies. Um, a lot of doilies are done with the crochet thread. Um, my um, mother-in-law, her sister, and um, my husband's grandmother uh, used to use it a lot. So there's a lot of pieces around the farm that have those special things, uh, special details on them. And it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. Some of it can get really, really thin. And then the next would be a super fine weight. And this would be your sock, uh, sock fingering weight, or baby yarn can fall into this category. Um, and again, on the chart, it lists uh, what size needles it recommends um, to use for it to kind of give you an idea of what gauge. So when you're swatching, um, you could test it on uh, up or down, uh, depending if you're working on a sock or baby garment, or if you're working on a shawl, you'd probably use a larger needle, or so I've heard. <laughs> this is just what, some of it's hearsay, some of it is um, knowledge. Um, the next weight would be a fine weight, and that would be sport weight yarns and baby yarns. Then there's a light weight, which is the DK weight and a light worsted. Uh, a medium yarn would be where your worsteds and the Aran weight would come in. It goes up to bulky, which would be more of your chunkier yarns. And then it has a super bulky and a jumbo weight, which a jumbo weight, it said, um, was encompassing... Um, some of those newer yarns, I don't know if you've seen, um, I've seen on Facebook and some um, of the online craft um, blogs that I follow, they're doing almost uh, very, very thick, almost like rope um, weight yarn, and they're knitting huge blankets just by hand. You're actually crocheting or knitting with your hands as needles and hooks instead of using needles, but they have some really big needles out there too, which are, it's crazy, really crazy. Um, so they're encompassing that too. And then when it comes to ply, I, I know a little bit about this because I've been kind of researching it. I'm interested in learning how to spin. Um, I've watched um, uh, Robin on the Cherry Pearls podcast has been talking about spinning a lot lately. And, um, and, and I've just kind of been following along um, some other um, podcasters talk about it. So a ply, uh, when you're spinning, um, one ply would be just whatever you spun, just that one ply is a one ply. And I have a yarn here. This is a Malabrigo. And as you can see, it's not twisted with anything. It's only twisted on itself um, when it was spun on the wheel. So that would be considered, that would be considered a one ply. Now, two ply would be taking two strands of this and then spinning putting them together back on the wheel and spinning them together. Now, I don't know about direction and, and twist and all that, but just then the two ply and then the same with three, four, five and going up. And I have another picture, a couple pictures of what I found um, showing that. So ply uh, has to do with how many strands of the yarn are worked um, together. And, and so let me see if I have, I don't know if this will show up, but this, this one, um, would probably be at least a two, maybe a three or four ply. But as you can see, the yarn is twisted around each other. Um, so that's a, a multiple ply. And then I did find one other fact that I did not know is when you use, when you start plying yarn that's already plied. So say you have a two plied yarn and you have four strands of the two plied, or four, I can count four strands of the two plied yarn and then you take all of those strands and ply those together that's called cording so that's something I did learn today 
So I hope that helps. I appreciate so much for you asking a question. I think this is a really fun little section um, that I was able to add in here. And uh, I hope to do some more. That was really exciting. I got to learn a little bit and look up um, a little extra of what I didn't know. And um, I did learn a bit about the weights also. I had an idea in my head about, um, you know, fingering and worsted. But there's a whole two categories in between with the baby and the sport and the DK. And um, that, was, that was actually really educational for me too. Thank you so much. And... Um time and I want to thank you all so much for coming back and watching my episode today um, if you're a new subscriber or a new viewer please subscribe and like um, that would be great helps me get out there a bit more and if you've already subscribed you know uh, it'll pop up when my next episode is up or if I have anything else exciting to put on there but it'll most likely be my next episode Thank you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic week. I know school's starting everywhere, and if not in the next two weeks, it will be starting um, beginning of September when my boys start. So thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.